Stay tuned after Furniture on the Mend for Furniture Theater. Tonight, Jack Nicholson in the lost classic, Five Easy Pieces of Furniture. First one, it's easy. Piece number three, just as easy. Number five, easiest one, got wheels. <laughs> Hi, I'm Joe Lararia. And I'm Ed Feldman, and this is Furniture on the Man. Yes, it is, and we're going to do some veneer repairs today because we showed you some veneer last week. And today, show you how to veneer. Right. Well, we said that uh, well. We, we said it three times. That's right. We're ready with a piece of, well, veneer. It's missing. First, this is a tabletop, see? What is it? It's a fat tabletop, but it's not. It's an illusion, see? Because it opens up. Why does it open up, you might ask? This is called a hall seat. Yeah. A whole, a whole table, I'm sorry. Yeah. But you can stand it up like this. Yeah. See? And it'll be against the wall. For the hall. With a doily. Call and, it Monty. And a glass. Uh -huh. and now, when you turn this around, yeah. you see we have a veneer here. We have a, pro a lack we of We have a same. veneer problem. Now, if you hold this up, and we see right there, you, you can get see some bubbles. Bubbles uh, akimbo. Bubbles. Bubbles akimbo. I, I she was I, a stripper. See, I was. <laughs> Okay, listen, for, uh, now on this piece, this is probably uh, assembled with high glue. The mm -hmm. high glue's holding the veneer on the top. You know what high glue is, don't you? He hid it, but he yeah. found it. Look, yeah. here I have some high glue here. Mmm, feels like a palomino to me. This is actually made out of our friends, the horses. The cloven hooves. <laughs> no, not a cloven. But they, they, they used this uh, kind of glue in the for old years days and years. for adhering veneer. They would melt it down, paint it on, and then attach the glue. Now to, attach the veneer, I'm sorry. Now, uh, to activate hide glue, if you've got a small bubble, such as we have here, you can reactivate it with a towel and a steam iron. You want to put a damp towel on there uh -huh. and a steam iron and press, and you could reactivate it, like you said. And because these few bubbles are slight, I mean, I don't want to get involved with slitting them and trying to get glue under there. So we're actually going to repeat, replace half of this tabletop with a new piece of veneer right here which is similar in grain. For small jobs, you might want uh, something like this. This is an injector. Look at that here. It's just like a hypodermic needle. You put, put the glue, glue in there. Yeah. And you drop the glue in there. Uh -huh. And you put the plunger back in. Uh -huh. And you shoot the glue into a... Uh, a bubble. A bubble or an edge. Right. But again, we're going to do... A, a bubble. Big, a and big thing. An edge. So what we have to do first is we have to do, figure out where we're going to make this cut. I'm going to use a framing square. You always do your repair work before you do the finishing. Uh -huh. Okay? So even though the table looks ratty, once I do the repair... We're going to throw it away. And do the... and strip it down, you'll see the difference. Making a slit. Yeah, a lot of people ask how you get this veneer off. Well, you got to scrape it all off. This is what it's all about. Now, the grain on this wood that I'm peeling off is running this way. The underlayment is running this way, all right? So if you try and scrape it off this way, you're going to cut into that underlayment, and you're going to make a gouge. So you've got to come off perpendicular to the underlayment. I had this piece. I started taking it off. You saw how difficult it was when I was taking it off. Well, what I did was I took some rags, and I wet them with hot water and just kept it on the area. And I told you this was adhered with hide glue, so it's quite wet now and it comes right off in strips. See that? What I also did was I scored it with the chisel like this to break into the wood. So now it's pretty much peeling right off. I'm going to have to let this dry because it has been soaking before I put the veneer glue in. So this is all cleaned off now. Finally! Finally! And we've decided to use a piece of piece of mahogany. Mahogany. Because it's got a dark finish on. Although I'm going to strip this off afterwards but this is a uh, this will be a suitable replacement. Now, we cut it one edge is square here. You see, this is going to fit in here. All right. And we've made a general line for the other cut. All right. This edge will have to be trimmed, and I'm just going to trim off most of this excess 
with uh, just a utility knife. The knife we got from Matt. This, you want to cover the entire surface at least twice. Why is that? Because you oftentimes have bare spots. And you don't be afraid of the glue dripping anywhere else because it rubs right off when it dries. The glue has set. This is the second coat. It's set. Just cleaning up a little. That's what happens. It sticks and you can't get rid of it. Okay. These are called stickers. And, and you're you going to lay the veneer on top of these so it doesn't stick right away. And position it correctly and then pull the stickers out from under the unsuspecting veneer. Right. Now we're going to put the veneer on. All is ready like if our this. minds be so. Always with a little bend, a, con a concavity to it. Okay, I want to line this up a little over the side. As are we. I'm going to push between the stickers. That'll adhere it. Pull this guy I'll, out. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. Gently. Flow gently, sweet Afton. Okay. That's good. Perfect. Take that one out, please. Move on down the line. The rubber veneer roller, just like the old printing presses. This is a dovetail saw, I mean a uh, veneer saw. This is going to go flush against the piece of wood called the top, and I'll be able to saw straight across. The veneer glue dry. We have now stripped the piece. We? What you mean we, Lone Ranger? <laughs> Tonto, you go to town. <laughs> you go to town, Tonto. <laughs> One of my favorite jokes. Uh, Tonto has, <laughs> has stripped this part, and now we're going to stain both parts to make them lovely and even. Well, there's two different kinds of woods. I mean, we can't find this kind of wood. This is mahogany. It's mahog mahogany. From the tropical rainforest. And I got a stain. Which will be there for at least another six months. It's a, a walnut stain with some golden oak, a little bit of burnt sienna. And paprika. Paprika and a little tarragon. No, forget those last two references. It's just an oil stain, so I'm going to just add a little bit of this to the wood. And see what happens. We shot the tone spray over everything, and darn, it looks nice. I used the tone spray and a clear spray. The tone spray evens it up, and then the clear spray gives you a nice shine. So that's it for a big veneer repair. Now we're going to go do another uh, detailed uh, repair with a book matched kind of veneer on a small little deco table. So let's get going on that one. Let's go. Furniture on the Mend is brought to you by Deft, the wood finish family. Hey, you got a veneer problem like this one. You got to do some serious work. Some kind of a table. Well, it's a deco table. Deco. It's, it's American deco, yes. That bent wood. It's walnut. And if you can see around here, this grain is book matched. Very similar to this new piece that we're going to use. The reason this is a more complex repair is because the, the repair goes actually beyond the veneer. It's, it's broken into the plywood or the underlayment. So we got to repair a, a piece. I want to make a line right here, here with a seam and out here. You got to keep scoring and peeling. Now what I'm doing is I'm actually pulling down on the chisel and as I'm banging, so it's cutting. You don't do that. Forget it. You know, you know Nor Norm has an electric chisel? Mm -hmm. I know he does. Don't make electric chisels. What? <laughs> so he had an electric chisel? Yeah, he has an electric chisel. It's got a plug on the back. <laughs> yeah, it just... Mm -hmm. That's, we used to do that with the hammer. <laughs> the electric cord, the electric hammer. We've cut and chiseled this down to the depth of 
the underlayment. Right. And I'm going to cut a new piece of underlayment, already marked, right here. Does it look good? Oh, oh it looks so good. Fits in perfect. Want to spread around with something? Get a piece of scrap wood. I, I just use my finger. Get the, get the C-clamp. Get the what? The C-clamp. I'm going to put that on there so I don't make... The reason I'm doing that is because when I tighten this up, I don't want to make a circle on this. So I'm going to put a pad there. What about underneath, though? I'm going to make a circle there. Yeah, you won't see that. Now we're better. Okay. There's a little overhang on the bottom, but I can plane that off at the end. There we are. It is perfect. Now it's time for glue. This is the Jackie Vernon School of Finishing. Hi there, fun seekers. Now we're putting on the glue. Here's a shot of the glue. I took the picture. Here's a shot of me and the glue. I don't know who took the picture. Here's a shot of the can of glue. Here's a shot of me. The glue took the picture. Now we've let this set up. It's set up on here and in here. So we match again. This is best. careful when you this down because you don't have too many chances no you only got one chance as a matter of fact even less than one this is a white lacquer I'm putting on that's gonna mask the color of the wood well it's not masking it it's it's making it lighter rather than bleaching it this is another technique that I spent years years and years Perfecting. So I'm going to take a dry powdered stain, or pigment, like this, which is almost the color. I'm going to put some using the bucket as the palette, clear lacquer. Put a little bit of that in there, and then with a rag, it's coming up golden. Well, it's going to have to entail some. Uh, some adjust color adjustments. Yeah, we'll go over that. Gotta get the ba basic foundation color in first. Everything's coming up golden. There's a Van Dyke brown. I'm just trying to get a little color in there. That's I all. think it's looking good. It's what I used to do in people's homes. That was my job. Doing now, up in people's homes. Take some clear. And here they'd stand. They'd stand right like this. Are you sure you're getting the color right there, son? Now on with the clear again. Off with the tape. And on now with these the sequin toner. gowns. Well, let's see what we get here. This is clear on top of the tone. It's a lot of layers. Actually, we could have just built up that, uh, built up the veneer with all this paint. Not bothered with that veneer. The thin veneer of civilization, that is our show. <laughs> That's right. We've done two projects. And this is uh, the finished of our deco piece. Mm -hmm. You can see the lovely book match is all done. Yeah, that's toned. the kind of veneer that you could find. The other piece, we couldn't find that same veneer. We didn't even know what it was. It was some kind of maple. And but we managed to fit a piece in there anyway. Completely on the other end of the spectrum, there are some things you should never attempt to veneer at all. For example, like this, this piece. This is hey, good could for you serving. pass me that? It's, it, it is good for something. So remember, especially first timers for veneer, pick a small piece, something you can handle. Don't try and do a giant tabletop and especially nothing like this. I've had people come to me, bring tables like this to me, or send me photos and say, is this worth fixing? No, it's not. It's worth, it's for firewood is what it's worth. But I like it. I'm going to take it home. You want to take it here? Look. No. 
I'm gonna take, or did, I thought you wanted it. No, come this way. No, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you have- Get the pickles. <laughs> get the pickles, get the pickles. Johnny, two pickles. Well, if you got dirty hardware, dirty and, brass hardware. And a free afternoon. That's right. And you don't wanna go and buy not sold in any stores expensive tarnish away products. All you have to do is go to your pantry or, or larder as some people call it and larder. get- Yes, larder. Get white vinegar. White vinegar. We got it on a hot plate here, and it's steaming. You can see it's nice and hot. Heat the vinegar up. Now, not the apricot balsamic no, yuppie no. type vinegar. No Regular. red vinegar. Save that for your Italian meals. And nice heat salad. it up and get. But, but I must say, this yes. is not. This is not going to give you a bright, shiny finish like those tarnish away things. No, that's that's a different effect. If you want real bright uh, silver or copper or gold or brass, you got to buy that stuff. This stuff gives it a nice, uh, clean look but it still leaves some of the dirt in, some of the highlights. So it's what we're doing is we're antiquing yeah, the pieces of this. brass or copper. If I put this in and scrub, let me try with the brass brush first. Oh, it looks lovely. See that? Now this is a brass brush. It's got brass bristles, so it's soft. And what it's not doing, the brass brush that is, is pulling the tarnish out of those fine carvings. See the difference? So those carvings are being highlighted, so it doesn't look like a brand new piece. Now I'm going to uh, dip this piece in. It's right at one. And you can also use a needle nose pliers if... If you want to. If you don't want your hands to smell like a submarine sandwich. Put that in there. Swish around. I did this in my shop once, cleaned lots and lots of hardware, 20 desks. Now, shop smelled like a deli for a month. I'm gonna use this little brush here, which is not brass. Let's see how it works. That's a wire brush. Wire brush. I'm gonna turn it around. Yeah, see, I'm doing the center part of the tail, the bale, that is. The bale. See how it's coming up as opposed to this part and that part? And here's this piece is finished. That's about all you would want to do, just like that. Gives it a nice look. See these pieces? The pieces that are holding the, the bale? I don't think they're the same metallic composition because they're not coming up. This they're probably nickel. This piece here, this is a, a knob, and I just did a little test on it. I think this is copper. Let's dip this in and see what we get from this. Boy, you get to do the little round things. I'm, I got Rococo over here. Now you may have to let them soak. The desks that I mentioned I did, I remember I put all the stuff in a pot and let them soak overnight because they were really cruddy. I like that. Highlights and lowlights. Let's make a lovely d little display. Mm -hmm. Now I think the big one look, should be in the middle. No, I no. think this one should be over. No, we no, can this start is a hardware store over, now, over here. Letters. It's letters time. Oh. Most excellent. I love these parts of the show when we get to be real intimate with our, our fans. Okay, now this one is from uh, Noreen Freifeld. I have a dining room table made of French oak from Belgium. Wait a minute, wouldn't that be Belgian oak? something like that. The top has a checkerboard effect. It's a mahogany finish. Years ago we were painting cabinet doors so I spread a thick cover of newspaper over the table to work on it. We had our coffee cups sitting on the paper. At any rate, the heat from the cups damaged the finish on the table. Ah, you know what that means? That means it's a shellac finish. Now I have a ta to keep a tablecloth over what was once a beautiful piece of work. That's no, a you good don't. Idea. What you do is you take some denatured alcohol mm -hmm. and you start rubbing the, the top with the denatured alcohol and some steel wool, and that'll take off the rest of the shellac that's on there, and then you can just apply a new finish. But don't use shellac again, because the same thing will happen. I recommend you use the denatured alcohol, the steel wool, go with the grain or with the checker pattern, whatever, just go in one direction. Checker pattern, how would that be? Very costly. If I Get Russ to Tamblin it. to help. No, 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 you can just go wipe the tabletop. You'll see the finish coming up. The, the denatured alcohol will soften the old shellac. After that, go to your local hardware store or someplace that sells varnishes and get- Go to a far away hardware store. Get, you wanna get a var top varnish and brush that on one or two coats and it'll be fine. Here I have one from uh, John David Stevens. 
It says, dear friends. Don't you like it when people say friends? It's not as good as my lover man, my one and only, but I am certainly glad that you uh, are doing a show concerning the repair of furniture. Don't look off. I have several nice pieces. Hey, you're the one making a fool of yourself on TV. I don't care. And yet the check gets earlier mm -hmm. every week. That hundred a week. I have several nice pieces in my basement to work on, but I haven't been doing too well getting started. Some of them have a high finish, which has been marked by unsightly scratches, etc. Maybe you could offer some advice once you saw the pieces. We certainly can for a high gloss finish, especially if it's that s opaque lacquer work that you see a lot of and have been for some years. You can use something called a rubbing or a buffing compound. It's kind of a cream, uh, a lot of uh, wood care. Kind films. of a cream. It's not really a cream. It's just kind of a cream. <laughs> it is a cream. It's actually a cream. Then say it's a cream. Not it kind is a, of a cream, cream, sir. You rub it on and you buff it off. You can use your hand, a lot of elbow grease, or you can get a buffing attachment that you can attach onto an electric drill with a lamb's yeah. wool bonnet. Or if you want to spend, you can buy a real buffer. Or you can even go to an automotive store and get one of those rubbing compounds for the car. Or better yet, you can hire somebody to do it for you. Send your $5 bills, too. Hey, I got uh, another final letter here. Dear Ed and Joe, mm -hmm. uh, I enjoy your show. This is from Clinton E. Hare. A likely story. I, don't, I enjoy your show, but I have a small suggestion to make. Why don't you guys get some hats on or put some of that furniture stain on your bald spots? As, as it is, the tops of your head look like a pair of hairy toilet seats. My question is, how do you repair a veneer that is lifted from water damage? Guess what? Guess what, Clinton? We know, there you go. but we're not going to tell you. You're, you're not allowed to watch our show anymore. Do you hear me? You're not allowed so, to watch. Any respectful letters with respectful uh, questions we will can gladly be sent read. to us, and we will gladly read and or come to your home in the dead of night wearing ski masks. Thank you. That's a sight on him. Letter segment over. Over. Out of here. Joe. All right, kids, we're talking over the credits now. Furniture problem got you down. Well, then write us. Maybe we can help. It's cheaper than a therapist. And your question might even end up on TV. Send your letters to furniture, furniture on the Mend. Care of the Learning Open. Channel. 7700 Wisconsin Avenue. Bethesda, Maryland, 20814. And we can't promise to answer.